So, my talk is about the editor, and you don't need the bevy editor you think you need. You actually need the one you didn't know was possible. This will be about my thoughts on the bevy editor. First, who am I? So, I'm a contributor on, and user of bevy since the version 0.2. And the point I wanted to call out was, if you have any ideas to improve testing the engine, come talk to me. I have ideas, I have opinions, but I always want to to, to have more about, the, about this. And a disclaimer, these are my personal thoughts. They do not represent the direction of the baby project, the opinion of the other maintainers, and it won't in, in turn into account when I will review peers or do anything for, uh, for the editor. It's just the direction I hope things will go. So what can we find in an editor? Let's take a look at the Godot one. So we have a scene viewer. We have an inspector on the left. We have the scene hierarchy on the, on the left. The inspector is on the right. And the project browser on the left too. Unity, pretty much the same. A big scene viewer, an inspector on the right. A uh, hierarchy for the scene on the left and a project browser on the bottom. Unreal, again, mostly the same. The scene viewer in the middle. This time the word outliner, which is a hierarchy, is on the right. The inspector is uh, PM, is uh, just under it. On the bottom, we have the project browser. And on the left, we have uh, L an helper to, to spawn uh, empty objects. So these are the, the common parts, the scene visualization, the scene hierarchy, an inspector, and a project browser. The good news is, if you want to have that in Bevy, we already have it. It's called Bevy Inspector AG UI. It's mostly exactly the same. So we have a scene viewer, we have the inspector, and we have the scene hierarchy. So that's it. It's just missing a project browser. What's missing to get from the inspector to edit editor with a BVJUI inspector? For the moment, it's not possible to save the change made in the inspector. And that's because as Bevy is code first, saving would actually mean editing the Rust files. So we first need to transition to a workflow that would work first with a scene files. And we don't currently have interactivity in the scene. But that would just be adding something like uh, BV mode picking and uh, BV gizmos, and it would be very easy to, to add. And what would be needed to have a fast editor? It would be we would need to be able to live reload a scene. And live reloading a scene is just not just reloading the current scene. We also need to have the current state, the existing entities that are not part of the scene but we still want and the resources to, to track the global state. And do we want to be able to hot reload the Rust code? And even worse, do we want to be able to do Rust code generation? For example, if I want to change the file of a shader for a material at the moment, it's implemented with a, th with a threat. So changing the file, we would need to change the implementation of a threat. If we want to be able to change threat through an editor, we would need to actually move that to a file instead of a, to a scene file or, or a material file instead of the, of the Rust code. And all the other parts, so the project browser, it seems a small part, but it's actually quite useful. For example, if you want to change the texture used by your material with the project browser, you can just drag and drop it. It's a lot easier than typing the, the path to the file. The code editor. The shader editor, again, nowadays we have very nice shader editors with, uh, with graph, which is a lot easier than uh, writing WGSL code. An animation editor, and the uh, game view, scene view split. For, for the moment, we mostly spoke about the scene view. The difference with the game view is uh, in game view, systems like gravity or uh, input are, uh, are running, while in scene view, you have free movement across the scene. But what's remaining for the Bevy editor? What should it do? Should it be able to edit Rust files? No, we won't recode something like VS Code or Vim. You continue using your preferred code editor. Edit 3D scenes? I think Blender is a perfectly fine tool for that. 
Edit Sprite, again, AZ Sprite is a very good tool for that. So what's an ECS editor? Is it an extremely common scene editor or whatever? No, it has, I think the interesting part of an ECS editor doesn't have to do anything to do with the scene. So what could be an entities editor? List and browse entities, run queries, and to be able to have statistics on what's happening in your application. For example, on the spawn and dispawn of entities, are entities ID reused and stuff like that. And it would be very interesting to be able to list system with a query that match an entity. So you have your entities, you, it's a mesh, and you want to list all the systems that would work on it. What would be a component editor? It would be able to display and edit the values, view archetype fragmentation and usage, and we could have statistics on add, remove, and change of those components. So would it be interesting to move it to a tag if it's just being uh, added and removed all the time? Or does it actually need to be a, a component with a value with a Boolean true-false because it's, uh, it's just changed too often? And we, we would also be able to configure the storage of the component. What would be a system editor? With that, we could be able to view systems and uh, dependencies and conflicts and have statistics on duration of the system and uh, on the system params, for example, the query used by the, the system, how many entities do they match? And all the rest that they add that are not standard to the ECS, so commands, events, resource, states, and tasks, stats on all of that. It would be very interesting to, to see how, much, how many commands we send on each frame. And uh, we could be able to send manual commands, send manual events, modify the resources, change that states and monitor tasks to see that they are not stuck. For example, these are scenarios that I would want to be able to do in the ECS editor. I want to be able to show system time interact with audio components, queries and command, to know how often I'm going to hear sounds if they are going to do things at the same time. I want to be able to monitor task spawning and find where buildup could happen. For example, if there is one system that spawns a pathfinding task that takes a lot of time, and then just after another system is spawning short task, maybe I should be able to order the system differently so that the short task leaves before. Find the big system blocking parallelism. So if there is one system, exclusive system that is very short, it's not an issue. But if there is one that takes a long time, maybe I should be able to split it in several systems to, to help with parallelism and uh, introduce other systems in between. I would like to be able also to reorder commands to limit archetype fragmentation. So for example, for, for the moment, we just issue the command Y by one. There is a, the project to be able to batch them, but maybe I should be able just to, to reorder them to, to, to improve the performance. And during the runtime, so during the game view, I would like to be able to enable and disable the system to, to change what is happening. And let's look at a few things that are already existing. So Bevid mod, Bevy mod debug dump is a plugin for Bevy that will print the graph of all the systems. It's currently just doing, uh, happening at the start, but uh, imagine that in an editor when you can click on a system and see stat about it, which kind of stat. Let's do look at the Flex Explorer, which is not in Rust, it's uh, for an, another ACS, but we can see uh, statistic about the uh, count of entities, performance of the, of the frame, duration of system, all the details we want about any entities, and we can interact with that. And another existing ACS editor that we could look at is Unity Dots. So it's a screenshot I made from a few of the panels they have. For example, on the top left, we have the list of systems with the entity count they would match and the time they spent uh, happening, and on which stage they are, which world they are working on, and their namespace, which is mostly like our uh, scope. On the right, top right, we have a list of components. So we can see the name of the component, the kind they are, if they, are a, if they have data, if they are a tag. On the bottom left, 
we have the list of archetypes, the memory they use, and the memory that is used in, in them. And we have details like how many entities are in them and all the components. And on a system on the bottom right, inspector, we have the query it's using and the easy access to each component it's using and if it's read or write. That's something I would really like to, to see all together in the Bevy ECS editor. And there are great tools out there if you don't want to see an editor directly. For example, for the scene editor, as generalist, you can use Blender or uh, LDTK. Both have very, very good integration with Bevy. If you want something more specialized, specialized you have Trench Broom, which is a quite free editor, or World Machine, which will help you create terrains and many, many more. The one I'm listing in this slide are just one I saw used with Bevy. If you want to edit image, you have a lot of tools again, which are very good. I really recommend as a sprite for anything pixel like with animations. If you want to, 2D animations, you have Read and Spine. Both have integration with Bevy and are working really nice. And storytelling, just recently, a plugin was uh, officially published for Yarn, Yarn Spinner. Yarn is a uh, Mod is a format used for a visual novel and is very nice for, for storytelling. For sound effect, again, you have uh, many tools. Is it something that we need to build into the Bevy editor or do we rely on external tools? And for code editor, I am not going to go into that fight, but yeah, there are a lot of good code editors already. And in closing thoughts, a scene editor doesn't make sense for me until we have a scene first workflow. But we can already work on the UI and it's fun and it's very high impact for the for the for Baby Engine because it will be the first thing newcomers will see. And again, these are personal thoughts, but to me it's boring because it's just reproducing what everybody else is doing. It's the same thing as all the other game engine. And we should try instead to explore what makes Baby unique. And there are a lot of low hanging fruits on project creation, like templating, feature selection, and asset management, like a configuration of meta files that could be already addressed and bring a lot of value to the project. And for the Bevy editor, look at the prototypes. It's something that started a few weeks ago and don't hesitate to create your own and have fun. And yeah, I have a lot of opinions and but open source is made to, to have fun. Don't burn out on it. So don't put pressure, just take care of yourself. Thank you. Bonsoir, thank, thank you so much. Uh, great talk. Uh, super interesting burning topic, right? So we have a bunch of questions. And uh, again, we are pretty late on time. So I would pick maybe the top two for now and then defer the rest uh, for the end of the uh, stream. Is that OK for you? Yeah. So um, question number one, I think the editor extendability of Unity is a huge strength. Is that a goal? And can it even be done in Rust? Uh, I don't know in Rust, but in Bevy, yes, because we have plugin for everything and reflections. With the architecture of Bevy based on plugin, we can do a lot of things. And with reflection, we can do all the others. But probably not at runtime, right? Like in Unity. <laughs> Do you want to edit the editor at runtime? I've seen people do crazy th things with that, yes. <laughs> OK. Uh, I would have to um, see a valid workflow for it, but yeah, maybe. <laughs> OK. Um, and uh, then we have, uh, what about the, what about to have a visualization? How systems are executed in relation to each other? So seeing which systems run after the other and which are running in parallel. Yeah, we almost have that with the uh, Bevy mock debug dump, but currently it's uh, just at build time. So it, it already exists. I would like to be able to use that in the editor and then be able to click on systems and zoom into what's happening in them. The next one goes to Francois. Um, could you give us an example of things that you uh, that could add value to the project in your opinion? I, I guess that is assuming uh, someone has some time at their hand and they want to contribute to the editor effort. Yeah, sure. Uh, an easy example would be asset processing. 
it was added in uh, baby 0.12. But at the moment, if you want to do uh, asset processing, you have to add them to your project, then run through your whole game to make sure all the assets are loaded, then save the asset processing, modify your game to disable it, and use directly the processed asset. We, we would need something to, to be able to process the asset outside of the game. And something too for the meta files management. At the moment, we don't have a way to create them easily, so it's manually edited. We, we, we could really use something for asset management. Okay, interesting. Is there is there like a, a ticket open for that or an issue, or RFC, something like that, that people can jump on? Probably a few lines in a PR by cart. <laughs> okay. Francois, uh, will we be able to play the game, or a game, I guess, written in Bevy, right out of the editor and mess with the state of all properties at some point, just like in Unity? Uh, that's one of the goals, yeah. Oh, exactly. We don't know yet, because it depends if it will be the same process or different process, or it will communicate between them. But yeah, it's one of the goals. Right now, the eGUI inspector shows a lot of stuff that is not really useful and modifiable. Will we do better, and how will it uh, be filtered, I guess? Uh, it wasn't really a big issue for me, but yeah, we can do better. Will we do it? It depends if someone wants to work on it. How to do it? It's uh, back to Alice and Bevy Reflect. We will we be able uh, to add metadata to reflection, for example, to mark a field. This is interesting for the editor. 